blow gun and a screwdriver. Now that's what we call a venture effect. So what's on today's video? I have two pumps to go through and do repairs on. One is a 4x4 Gorman Rupp pump and the other is an 8x6 Godwin that I use at my mine site all the time. So let's start off with the 4 inch. It needs a new battery, a fuel tank, a fan belt installed, and most importantly a new GS1250 seal kit. I built this pump around 8 years ago from a bunch of junkyard material. The pump itself is a salvage piece. I had to rebuild the impeller and make an adapter shaft to go from the engine to the pump. It's rigged together with a 4 cylinder Kubota diesel taken out of a reefer. Not that kind of reefer. This engine came from a cooling unit hauled by a semi trailer. Lots of these cooling units have a 4 cylinder Kubota diesel mounted on the front of them to run an air conditioning pump. I used this engine and made it to that Gorman Rupp. So after editing the first few minutes of this video last night, I realized that the scene looks super familiar. Coveralls, slick back hair, brick back wall. Let me give you a clue. Good morning. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. May I speak with you? So anyways, enough talking. Let's go grab a pump and start some repairs. Time to grab pump number one. There are two styles of water pumps that should never be ran without water in the casings. This Gorman Rupp being one of the styles and the other is the smaller 1 inch to 4 inch portable ones you see on all the prospecting videos. Now the hard part, trying to weasel this thing in through this door. The seals are very prone to overheating and the water that cools the ceramic or brass that are made of needs to be in the casing. Now that this thing is thawed out for the night, just going to take a quick blow gun and get all these pine needles off. We're going to change seals on this. I need to get this thing running again. It's been so long, I think probably about six years since it ran last. So I'll just use some of the 16 gauge sheet metal I had kicking around. I'll get it measured out, stick it in the shear, get the pieces cut up, actually bend a shape into an L on my metal brake. Measure this guy out an inch and a half on both pieces. Now let's slide this thing in the brake and make our shape. So this is where the pieces are going to go. Fuel tank is going to sit on here and then this edge will cradle the side. So I need to make two more pieces for the very ends. This metal shear I've owned for almost 15 years and it was one of my most used tools when I was building hot rods. You'll hear me say this a lot, but I purchased it from a scrapyard. Why would someone just throw it away? Now let's get the grinder out and take some paint off so we can weld properly. Safety glasses first. You'll notice in my videos I'm always using cordless Milwaukee tools. I personally don't have a preference between the competing brands but Milwaukee has more options on what to buy. On a mine site cordless tools are a must. Hauling a generator and extension cords around is a good way to waste time when it should be sluicing.
So to weld this thing on, we're going to use my 212 MIG welder from Miller. This Miller is my smaller welder and I only use it in the shop. The duty cycle on it is only 60%, so that means I can only weld for six minutes on thicker material and let it rest for four minutes. My big 400 diesel Miller welder with a remote MIG pack is capable of welding 045 wire and has a 100% duty cycle. I only use the large Miller outside at my house or on the mine site. So this fuel tank has a little bit of damage as you can see. I'm just going to use a heat gun, heat this thing up and bend her back into shape. And we'll just use a cool rag. What that does is actually freezes the plastic back into shape. So there we have it. Good enough. It's only for a fuel pump, it's not a hot rod. Now that the mounting brackets have cooled down a little bit, I'm just gonna toss this thing back up. With the fuel tank back on, I need to check to see if I have about three feet of fuel line. Yeah, that'll do. And no, that's not real gold. It's for a funny video I have coming up in the future. So with the banjo bolt off, I wanna show you something that has occurred to me so many times on and on with engines. So what has happened in the past with all my excavators is these banjo bolts actually have a small screen inside of them. Let's take this thing apart and I'll show you exactly what happens. You can see that hole is actually almost completely clogged. But what do I do to cure that problem? I actually remove this screen and I put an inline fuel filter. Now look how dirty that thing is. It actually sucked itself in and it was so clogged. Okay, so I just put fuel in this fuel tank, primed the fuel system, put a battery in, Let's fire this thing up. Glow plugs, will she fire. Ooh, that didn't sound good. With the engine running good, let's shut it off and replace the seals. So a question you may have is how does a pump work? To prime the pump, the casing must be filled with water. As you fill the casing, the water level goes above the impeller and fills the entire housing. Once you start the engine, the water will start to get sucked up the intake hose. As the impeller spins, it displaces the air in the intake with water. Any air that is trapped in the system exits through the discharge port. Now the trouble with water pumps is any leaks present on the intake side, the pump will just suck air through the seals or the intake flange. Water pumps always give me trouble and seem to be the number one cause of shutdowns on my site. Now, to remove the impeller, I just jam the impeller in place and hand turn the engine in reverse. Now I'm just gonna use a pick and try and pull these seals out. All of that grease that showed up behind the impeller is from the leaking seals. With the seals shot, the grease comes puking out the impeller side. There's the other rubbers. See that one is actually split there. So check out how bad this old seal is. This thing is completely shot. This piece of steel right here is actually supposed to be that thick. There isn't even any brass in it anymore. It's just annihilated. Let's put this thing back together. So there we have it. That four inch pump is all done. Put a new battery in it, fan belt, new seal kit. It's a good thing that I found that fuel issue. It could have caused me problems in the future. So on to the next one. This is my eight inch self priming Godwin pump. It is the second most expensive piece of equipment I own on my site. Having a reliable pump has been on my wish list for many years and two years ago I finally got it. 
Yes, it is currently in need of mechanical repairs, but this has been the only problem I have ever had with it. I absolutely love this thing, but not like that. So this pump needs a quick job. I have to change the priming belt on it for the air compressor. Air compressor on a pump? These Godwins use a dry prime pump system. The compressor is driven off of the engine and as it sends high pressure air to the venturi unit, the air flows through a small orifice in the unit and out the discharge hose. While mostly air, but some water is drawn up the intake side, it is discharged into the environment. Now you may ask what a venturi is. I have a perfect example, let me show you. By using high compressed air from my shop with a blow gun and a screwdriver, this will show you the perfect effect of a venturi. This screwdriver will actually end up floating. Now that's what we call a venturi effect. As the compressed air flows over the screwdriver, it causes a small amount of friction and a small amount of uplift and it'll actually make the screwdriver float. It's the same concept that dredges use for underwater mining. Now that this pump is thawed out for the night, I have to call up the local automotive store and order up a belt for them. Hey there, uh, just looking for a belt for a 8x8 Godwin pump. It's actually the belt that goes from the compressor down to the engine. No, no it's not four wheel drive. No, it doesn't have air conditioning, it's a pump. Okay, you found it? Great. Yeah, just uh, order that thing up for me. What's the price for it? 437 bucks? That's insane. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I need it, so just order me it in. Thank you, bye. $437 for a cog belt. It's about the size of my head. Guess that's the cost of mining. This belt broke on me near the end of the season. I knew it was an expensive belt and lengthy repair time, so I compromised and used my dump truck air and ran it to the Venturi unit to prime the pump every morning. Now, I've never had to do one of these belts myself. It should be easy enough. It's just simple mechanical work. So with the belt off, you can see exactly what's going on here. This is a cog pulley right here with the lines going that way. This belt has no cogs left. They're all sitting right there. So what we need to do is divorce the pump from the engine. Have to undo all these bell housing bolts. A couple bolts back there. And we're gonna slide the entire pump back, put the new belt on, and then slide the pump back to the engine. Now I'm going to pop these coolant lines off and zap strap them up top here. Bust these bolts loose. So I've got a car jack under there holding the weight of the bushing. Looks like I'm going to have to pop this guy off, this valve, so this whole pump can come back. With that bar off, I'm just gonna try and wiggle this pump backwards now and see what happens. So I've got enough room to take the old belt out, but I still have to kick it back because the cogs on the new belt will be about a quarter of an inch thicker. Hopefully this thing does not fall off that perch. Okay, that's going to be plenty enough room. Let's slide this guy out. There we go. This looks like a serpentine belt now, not even a cog on it. This slide adapter slides into the engine. The piece on the engine is actually a very hard plastic. It's designed to break if the pump ever sucks up a large rock or a stick. This one looks like it's in good condition, so I'm just gonna keep it in and run it next year. With the new belt put on, the tension back to factory specs, we can put this thing back together. 
Okay, we've got everything back together. The belt is on. The tension is adjusted. We can put the safety cover back on. This pump is done. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed my second winter vlog on pumps. I have to make this quick. I have someone coming in right now. It's time for a beer. Hey bud, how's it going? Hey buddy, man? how's it going? Oh, oh, you're doing your winter vlog. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing my winter vlog. Yeah. Well, have fun. Yeah, I need a beer. Beer's in the bath. You know where it's at, dude. So, that was one of my employees. He's a royal pain in the ass, but you gotta keep him around. Some of you may have been wondering about the thumbnail title. Why do my pumps suck after I repaired them? Well, technically, they didn't suck before, but now they do suck water, so they do technically suck, if that makes any sense. And technically isn't clickbait. I hope you learned something today on how pumps work, and hey, just give me like two more seconds. I'm almost done. Okay, fine. Anyway, I hope you learned something today on how pumps work, how to repair them, this might help you in the future, who knows. Anyways, take care, see you on the next one.